Let's talk early season river walleyes. We're fishing super cold water right now, 36 degrees, it's creeping up to 37. I'm starting with stuff that's a lot more subtle. So like this Authentics rib fin, a fluke style bait, there's not a lot of action because it doesn't have that paddle tail or curly tail. Really neutral, but it still has the ribs and moves some water and it can be fished super subtle and slow. I like it on the lightest jig head I can get away with and you have to let the current tell you what that is. Today, a quarter ounce is working great, even an eighth ounce when we're sliding up into five, six, seven foot rocks. But basically you wanna start with the lightest jig that you can get away with and still have some bottom contact. So this is one of my favorite cold, cold, cold water options. Quarter ounce VMC Neon Moon Eye Jig Head. I just am a big fan of that pill-shaped head, the way it cuts and tracks in water. And I actually like the little bit lighter hooks. The Sleek Jig has got a 1X hook, a little bit more stout. Uh, in this cold water, when I'm just crawling that bait along, and I maybe I'm not feeling that fish donk it, it might just mush up. I feel like I can get a little better hook set with that really thin gauge wire, thinner gauge hook, thinner gauge wire. And also if you're fishing in snaggy rocks, I don't mind being able to bend that hook out a little bit to save the jig. Now if it gets too janky, I don't want to be bending it back because then if you hook up with a 28 incher, ouch. But starting out in super cold water, I did a video this last fall in 36 or 38 degree water with the same bait. Springtime, fall time, cold water, less action. As soon as it gets a little bit warmer, you get into those upper 30s, that's when I like switching to that moxie tail. So it's not, again, the big giant paddle tail, super aggressive, but it adds that little bit of flutter down there, a little bit more action and movement. And it just seems like still in cold water, it really shines. You can catch them all year round on that, right? But it's kind of that next step up from that fluke style to the paddle tail, basically a hybrid of the two. Enter paddle tails. This one's the Authentics Pulsar, Pulse R. And same body as that Moxie, the ribs, but it's got a little kicker paddle tail, a little more action, can be fished a little more aggressively. When the water gets a little bit warmer and you're up towards 40 degrees and those fish are really snapping, that's when I really like the paddle tails, the pulsars, fishing it a little more aggressive. Now at the same time, this is kind of counterintuitive, but one of my favorite really cold water baits is a bigger bodied plastic like this, boot tail. And it goes against everything I just said, except for I fish it differently. I like this on, today, a 3 a ounce VMC boxer head. The heavier jig head is actually just because there's way more plastic in this bait, as you can see. So it's a lot more buoyant. It doesn't cut the water as well. You need that next size up of the jig head just to fish it right. And what I do in this super cold water is I just drag this along bottom and just let that paddle tail kick stretch that plastic on that paddle tail out a little bit to loosen it up and you'll notice that even in just the slowest current like we have today that'll kick even when you're barely moving that bait and when this water is in the upper 30s like this i'll cast it out and i'll literally just drag this along bottom and i like that hook on that boxer jig it's a really stout thicker hook basically it's a bass swim bait jig head but it's fun when you're dragging on bottom to really, you mush up and you can feel a fish and just to lean in them, 10 pound braided line and not worry about bending any hooks out. I couldn't talk about cold water and fishing for river walleyes without mentioning the fuzz, a bucktail jig. This one's a VMC bucktail, quarter ounce head or three eighths ounce head, depending on the current. There's just something special about hair in cold water. And I'm primarily not using live bait, not using salted minnows. I like catching them on plastics and artificials. If the water's really cold and those fish just aren't in the right mood, absolutely don't feel bad to throw a salty, a frozen shiner on there or a fathead or whatever and let that hair flutter in the water, real subtle movements, and it's just an awesome option for cold, cold water walleyes. So with all these different jig setups, the hair, the 3 8 ounce, the quarter. I'm running basically the same line setup with one minor tweak. I run eight pound suffix advanced braid. It's got super thin diameter, so it really cuts that current. You don't get that big bow in your line from if you're running mono and it's almost dragging in the current. Man, to feel bites is almost impossible. And when you do get a bite and try to set the hook, there's so much bow in your line. You just have, you can't even catch up to them. 
and that eight pound is crazy thin so it does a good job of cutting but it's also very strong i swear it's a lot stronger than eight pound you can't tell me you can break that like you can eight pound um mono or fluoro and then i'll throw a fluorocarbon leader on there and it depends on the river clarity you don't need to get crazy with it but i like having a floral leader because one if i get into a situation where i need to break it off because i'm really snarled in some nasty rocks or snags it's doable without cutting your hand off trying to break that braid i feel like you get a little better action out of the baits uh just having that fluorocarbon leader i do a 10 pound almost all the way across the board and the exception that i mentioned is when I'm using something a little bit beefier like this, I'll sometimes bump up to a 12 pound if I'm dragging along bottom because there's so many nicks and things to just snarl up your line that making that jump from 10 to 12 is uh, pretty substantial with how many baits you lose. So no matter which style of bait that I'm using here, I let the water temperature and the mood of the fish tell me how I'm working them. I usually start out kind of in the middle I guess and wait until I catch that first fish to tell me what to do but right now water's still really cold upper 30s and it's a really slow either drag on the bottom with the swim bait or really subtle lifts and drops I still want that bait lifting up and dropping down a lot of times that's right when they pick it up you go to pump that bait again and you're basically set the, setting the hook into them like it's a jig and wrap now the warmer the water gets, obviously the more aggressive you can get to snapping and getting those double pumps and getting those reaction bites, but early season like this, and that's even on lakes too, but cold water rivers, you gotta slow down. And it's so hard because we've been cooped up ice fishing all year. You get out in the boat and you just wanna start getting back into that like, you know, June through September snap jigging rhythm with your plastics up in the weeds. And you can catch fish like that once it bumps up into that 40 degree range and higher, it seems like. But if it's still in those upper 30s, slow down, pumps. A lot of times they're going to pick it up when you go to drop that bait back down and they'll pin it to bottom. As far as early spring river locations for walleyes, there's a couple of different approaches you can do. A lot of folks out here today are anchoring up in 15 to 25 foot holes on bends, finding that deeper water and fish will basically reload in there. You'll have a wave coming upstream, pushing up to spawn. They'll slide into those deeper holes. You'll catch a few, you might have a lull, and then all of a sudden another wave of fish is coming in up river and it reloads. I grew up a bass fisherman, so I don't like to sit still very long and anchoring sounds not ideal. I like to be moving and casting and pitching. So a lot of the times I like fishing skinnier water up shallow, up in the snags, rocks, stumps, you name it. And it seems to me like you might not catch as many fish some days, but the average size is pretty okay. It's a lot of the times those bigger females. And I'm not sure if it's because they're either, either heading upstream to go drop those kids off at daycare, those 500,000 eggs, or if they just got done spawning and exerting all that energy and they ride the current back downstream, they'll slide out of that current into that slacker water to rest and also to feed. And so if you can find those seams where that current is moving pretty good, but all of a sudden it meets slack water, it's almost like a weed edge in the summertime with fish working that. But those little backwater areas where the current is pretty slack can just be awesome areas to pitch shallow jigs and catch big walleyes. Another one of my favorite things as far as numbers of fish go is fishing sand dunes. And I'll go outside of these slack water areas and let's say it's 15, 16 feet all the way across this whole river. If there's a 10 to 12 foot series of sand dunes, you can see fish on side imaging hiding behind those rolling dunes created by the current. And it's a lot of the times a good place to get numbers of fish. You can get the odd big one in there too, but as far as just getting a lot of hook sets in, those sand dune fish are crazy overlooked. As far as colors go, obviously it's big time personal preference and here's my personal preference. I'm either a very bright, gaudy guy or I'm a white, silver, lake shiner looking shad running up the river in the spring. And it just feels like no matter what river system in the world you fish walleyes for, if you have oranges, pinks, whites and chartreuses, you're gonna catch fish any river in the world that has walleyes. Spring is sprung, walleyes are snapping, water temps are on the rise, the bite's only gonna get better and better from here on out. So take advantage of it, 
try out some jigs and plastics, a little bit of bucktail. You don't have to use crawlers and leeches and minnows to catch walleyes. Walleye fishing doesn't have to be boring. Go out there and bass fish for them.